Today we're going to have fun with what is a really simple sketch, but because it's so simple and it's got so much atmosphere, we can have a load of fun with it. So we're going to be playing with our ink to start with, and then of course our watercolours in this easy line and wash tutorial. All I'm using today, I've got a couple of pens. I've got a Twisby Diamond 580 and a Platinum 3776. Both of them are fountain pens, but you could use any waterproof pen. To make it waterproof, I'm using carbon ink, which is a waterproof fountain pen ink. Um, I've got potentially to use up here some Posca pens, not sure about those yet, and they are very optional. Then over here, I've got my normal set of watercolours. All of these are linked in the description below in my supplies link, as well as a range of brushes, a couple of flat brushes and a round brush. And of course, I've got one watercolour pencil. So. Recently I've been playing with my watercolour pencil to start my sketches and that's exactly what we're going to do today. So this is a red watercolour pencil. It's a little bit like the effect you get if you do a nice um, underpainting in acrylic or oil even, where you do a nice bright red underpainting. You can get something similar but different by using a watercolour pencil to start off a simple sketch in watercolour. So what I'm going to do is just use this Scarlet Lake pencil to get in the key shapes. Not worrying too much about being exact because we're going to come back in in a moment with our ink. And just by getting in this kind of loose line where we've got these key areas marked in. So this is that wall that comes across. Then behind it we're going to have the kind of horizon which comes all the way across as well. Then in front of that, we've got our actual building, which is a little sort of wooden church. Well, it seems like a wooden church. It's probably a stone church, isn't it? No, it is a wooden church. And it's got a lovely tin roof by the looks of things as well. And what we can do is we can just get those clear shapes in. And it, if they're wrong, if they're right, whatever. But we'll get, what they're going to leave is this interesting red mark underlying the rest of our sketch which will soften a lot with our watercolors of course but it will still have a little hint there something really fun i think really interesting to play with to make it stand out i'm just going to do a little bit more maybe some hatching some sort of shading with that red where i see shadows and that's just going to provide a sort of bit of tone to work with obviously it's the wrong sort of hue isn't it it's not the right hue for what we actually see here but it doesn't matter. When we are creating art, we can take liberties in lots of ways, and this is one of them. And like that, we're basically done. I'm just going to mark in. We've got in this sort of grassy verge in front of us, we've got actually some perspective to take note of. You've got this area sort of coming across. You've got an area coming down. And you notice all of these marks that we see in front of us, they actually have a kind of perspective. So it's useful with your pencil just to mark some of that in as well. And like that, we are done. And now I'm going to move on to a finer sketch. I'm actually going to use my Platinum 3776 for this. So this has got an ultra extra fine nib. And using that, I'm just going to find the church a little bit more character, a little bit more specific this time. So I'm going to do my normal sort of wobbly lines. And I know that not everyone likes these. And um, some people do, which is great. Um, so you do you, uh, but get a little bit of extra character into your line if you can, rather than just a strict, straight, flat line. There are lots of lots of ways to do that. I've done videos about how to get characterful lines in the past, and it doesn't just have to be wobbly. There are loads and loads of ways that you can introduce a little bit of extra fun into your line work. And just going to get a little bit more of these sort of shapes down here. We can add a few of the, the smaller shapes in as well. So back here, for example, we've got the door, which I hadn't added as a one of my red pencil shapes. But we can add that in now. And then we've also obviously got these windows. So I can sort of start getting those marked in as well. Get the next window and get the next window. And as I like to do, I'm doing a bit of a sort of continuous line feel to this this sketch. That's just, again, something I think adds a huge amount of character very quickly to a sketch. And so for me, very worth doing, but it, it may not be for you. And again, think of other things, other ways to make your sketch suit you, but be interesting rather than just straight flat lines, which don't really represent what's in front of you. 
try adding a little bit of character, a little bit of texture. Coming along now, the the line I'm trying to get here is kind of the bottom of the uh, the bottom of the the wall, but the bottom of the wall is of course grass. So I'm getting that sort of grassy, loopy feel in. Over here, the wall feels more certain. So I'm going to just make that line a little bolder. I think climbing up a little bit, aren't we? Just because of both perspective, and I think that wall gets a little bit bigger. And then in the background, it sort of suddenly shrinks. So we'll come down. There's a little something there. I'm not sure what it is. A little plaque, maybe a little style. And there we go. That's the sort of main focus of our scene in. Now, we just get these sort of verges in again. Get the horizon back in. Not going to draw the horizon all the way underneath. We'll get the horizon coming across like that. There you go. You can hear Betty. It's obviously, you can tell the time of day when I'm filming because you can hear Betty wanting to go for her walk. So apologies for that. Apologies if you get very squeaky as well. Um, and there we go. What I'm doing now, just a few little loose abstract marks to suggest these clumps of grass. We can play with that a little bit more later. The same here, just some loose marks. This is again something I like doing. It's loose marks to fill up this space, to start suggesting kind of what's going on in these areas. We can do a few more textural marks to show that this is long grass and leave this more blank to show it's not long grass. And that is kind of step one, shapes done. What I am going to do is add a little bit here though, add another sort of semi-step and um, really enhance some of this contrast. We've already done it a little bit with our, our red, um, but a little bit more with our ink will, I think, go a long way to help this sketch along. So what we've got is a shadow coming over here, haven't we? So this is slightly in shadow, but all of these sides facing us are very much in shadow. And this, just adding this simple hatching, and I'm just basically doing almost entirely vertical hatching, and adding this vertical hatching, hopefully we'll just unify all of this uh, in terms of the, the value, in terms of where the light and dark in the scene are. It doesn't have to be super neat, it doesn't have to be super clever. We can always come back and add to it. We can do a little bit more actually on this, which as we come back and look, isn't as dark now. And that's the thing about contrast. Contrast is relative in a scene. So if you make something dark, then everything else will appear a bit lighter. So you might have to re-edit some of your value as you move around the scene. Got a nice little uh, bit to add here as well. All these little bits you find which you hadn't added first time. And this edge of this sign even has a nice dark edge. And I think like that, we're ready to move on to the, the fun bit, the loose colours. And this is where this red will both sort of stay there, but sort of move away, sort of disappear. And what I'm going to do, as ever, is I'm going to start in the sky. Now what we've got here, you've got this doomy, loomy cloud up here. So just to remind myself, this is where I'm going to pop my water. There's lots and lots going on with the moody, deep cloud. So I'm just going to start there with a wet on wet approach. And then we can move colours from there as we want to sort of create everything else going on. And you can see if I just touch in, this is indigo, if I just touch that in, that will just fill that space. Um, you could also mix like a ultramarine with uh, something dark and black or even with a uh, neutralising colour like a brown if you want to create a nice moody sky. Going to add a little bit of um, lunar black into that to really enhance some of the mood, the granulation. And as we can see, this kind of mood continues up over here. So I'm staying nice and wet with my painting. And it also sort of comes down in these waves down like so, doesn't it? So now I can use some big, sort of bold brush strokes. And this is kind of somewhere between a la prima painting and just loose, expressive painting. I'm using like wet on wet techniques to try and let the watercolours do their own thing. So now I'm just using water to drag these colours around, create a little bit of movement in that sky, but gradually trying to get it to fade out and out as it comes down onto our horizon. Over here we've got this really bright, bright area. So what I'm actually going to try and do is get a little bit of a neutralizing color in there. So a little bit of brown. It's actually connected in sienna up in the top of my palette there. And hopefully we can just drop that in underneath and use that same color just in here to kind of join up the sky, but also then be able to leave this bright, 
bright white area and there we go that is looking all right at the moment i'm going to swap to a smaller brush just to pick up a little bit more pigment what we can do with a little bit more pigment on a smaller brush we can drop that in and whilst things are still really wet do you see how just very very wet this page is as I drop it in, I don't have to paint it. The, the key is not to come in and do lots and lots of strokes. The key is to touch the page, move it around a bit, but keep it all as one stroke. And that will keep these colors fluid and hopefully avoid that overworked feeling, which is a bit too easy to get sometimes in our, in our watercolors. And the other tip is just to stop before you've gone too far. So I'm gonna do some splashes of water. I'm gonna do one of my favorite things to do in this kind of moody, moody color which is actually come back in with a tiny bit of cobalt blue maybe even sometimes i'll show you cobalt turquoise and just these little touches kind of lift it i can't explain it more than that but they just give a for me a nice lift a nice different feel going on in there we could even do we could even let's do it because we said this is all about playing with watercolors we could even lift it with a a bright color coming down here just because that, that will stand out too much if it's on its own. So then that bright yellow just has to move around the sky a little bit. And you can find places to add it. You can find under some of these clouds, you've got light coming in. Under here, we've got this patch of light. Under here, we've got this patch of light. So these patches of light can all have a little yellow undertone next to them. And like that, I would say our sky is looking pretty good. And when it's looking pretty good, often watercolor, the sensible thing to do is go, I'm going to leave it before I go wrong, go from pretty good to overworked. And with that, I can then just move on. So I'm going to take some green gold and again, do a kind of very loose painting coming across. Mix that in with a bit of green Appetite Genuine, my favourite two greens at the moment. Although I have also started playing with um, cobalt green, which I must say may come into my palette very soon. And using those, we can just again start getting those sort of lines of perspective, which we can feel coming across across our scene going to leave this distant layer we've got this distant layer and um, i'm going to leave that nice white at the moment what i am going to do is just use a little bit of indigo and kind of try to link things up a little bit and then start getting some of this wall which is just a very deep color done as well with that simple touch of indigo but allowing things to leak forward leak backwards leak between the wall the grass the wall the grass we can make sense of that later but if it's nice and fluid now then we'll definitely be able to have fun if it's all sort of too hard too firm too definite early on well you kind of you've made too many decisions and often you lose that loose feel at least that's what i find in my painting and there we go so the only thing left really is to decide what we're going to do with our church and it is very dark so let's stick with our indigo i'm going to mix a bit of lunar black in with it to give it a, just a different kind of feel and i'm going to just touch in some of that with my big brush and then i'm going to come back in and whilst it's still wet i can soften that around move it around hopefully leaving a little bit of white in there and then just let it kind of flow into the other areas of the church up here maybe we just bring out something different uh, a bit more of that cobalt blue just give it a blue roof because then we are linking these blues which aren't otherwise somewhere else and we're also just changing the feel of roof and wall just separating things out a little bit more and hopefully that will just make things sort of stand out a little more I like this leak of blue as well into the sky for me that that's the kind of thing i really enjoy um if you don't enjoy that then just be a little more careful than i am as you sort of join these things up what could be fun i wasn't going to do this but what can be really fun is to actually do a bit of sort of dry on wet watercolor pencil and this way we can actually reintroduce some of those red undertones just in a few places getting a bit of that texture and you'll see that the the pencil kind of uh it kind of activates at the same time as drawing. So you end up with this nice tone coming through. Um, and hopefully, a bit of an experimental touch with these blues and indigo is already on the page, but hopefully that will work rather nicely, just add to the kind of feeling of a glow. I might even just, because it's there, just give this 
a pencil, a couple of little swirls on the edge. I, for me, that, that's again, just a little silly sort of stylistic touch, which I like to do. You don't have to like to do that, but I like to do these kind of things. A few little splashes of this green, just to loosen up the foreground. And now, I'm gonna let this dry, and we will see that actually it looks a bit mad at the moment, but it will calm down and we'll come back and add some specific colors to it. And here we are, we're mostly dry, not entirely, but mostly dry. Um, and you can see things have settled a lot. We've actually got some really lovely things going on. And the things I look for are these swirls of color, like blooming out, blooming out here, the way these colors are mingling, and also the variation we have in all of these washes. And all I want to do is pick out a few areas for some bolder colors. And this is where I'm gonna use this little flat brush. And this little flat brush will apply a bit thicker paint. I don't want it to be super dry, but I want it to certainly be thicker, darker, a bit more specific, perhaps a little slightly painterly kind of feel. Painterly feel being where you can kind of see the idea of the brush strokes which someone has used to create an image. Um, and I'm gonna use the same color. So that was just a bit of indigo onto the church. Here's a little bit of that cobalt blue. And you can see just creating that bit more competing texture. Um, we've got this white wall and I think maybe, I was gonna leave it white, but maybe just like a little kind of touch of yellow, just to mirror some of these other yellows. Then I'm gonna move away and see what that looks like in a second when it's dry. And then come back into the foreground and just use some of these sort of what I'm calling painterly marks again, just to bring out some of these little patches of grass that we were talking about earlier. And just using little square marks, very, very sort of obvious that it's been painted. It's supposed to look like that. And it also will apply a nice sort of layering effect. So you get this kind of patchwork of color that builds up as we develop our sketch. Um, some of them will be soft where it's wet on wet, those edges will be soft, some of them will be hard. So it's important not to overdo it or we'll lose some of our sketch by having too many sort of hard lines. Now I'm gonna find some reds, because I like red, basically. We've got that red undertone already. And for me, you could imagine some of these little marks back here being slightly orange. So for me, that's where my little red touches are gonna come in. Again, just to keep things unified, some of this red has to go elsewhere. So I'll just find some other places, perhaps even use it in the walls a little bit, a little bit of red here and there. And then maybe even a nice bit of bright red, just going up here. And that was a bit, bit more clumsy than I tended to be, but we'll save that with our, um, we'll save that with our ink in a moment. Last little touches, some really dark areas onto our wall here. Little touches of this dark, little bit of this uh, cobalt as well, just to give that a bit of variation as we move across our wall. And there we go. So I'm now gonna let this dry, some more abstract touches, and we will come back, we will restructure, we'll find some value in these, um, in these areas where we've added these little square marks using our pen. And here we are, nice and dry. What I now want to do is apply some structure. So I'm actually gonna use my slightly bolder pen. This is still an extra fine nib. Um, and I'm gonna go around and just find the, the structure in the image. So that's where I've got these loose marks. And I'm just gonna go over a few of them. And like I said, we can rescue this clumsy bit of painting from me earlier with a simple bolder mark. And this is where you can get away with a lot. You can get away with really letting those colors flow. You'll be able to get away with silly squares of paint everywhere because you can come back with bolder marks. Don't want them to be too bold or it becomes like a kind of comic book illustration, which is okay, it's not a problem, but it's not the style I'm after. Um, but we can certainly come back with nice bold marks and pick out much of our scene again. We've lost some of these windows, we can have a look at how to get those back as well in a moment. A um, few of these textures we can enhance, keep that roof nice and busy because what we want is people to look here. So we want the contrast, the busyness focused around here and a kind of flow. We've got this kind of spiral. It's one of the compositional techniques. You've got this spiral where your eye will flow hopefully through the scene. To keep that flow going, then having a nice strong line 
along here is important and that can come up there and kind of become looser as we get away from the the interest point here look we've got all these little squares so we can now introduce lines around those squares have a bit of fun with it and hopefully introduce you know some extra sense of purpose behind some of these very loose marks these very abstract squares we've done coming forward again i don't want to do too much but we want to just enhance what's going on and we can use some of these squares we can come around them we can turn them into little buds of flowers we can loop around them and it's just about you know having a bit of fun experimenting and it may not always work and you may not like these little touches but if you don't try them then you won't discover what does work for you and you'll always be stuck doing the same thing so that's why i'm doing something a little bit different today even if it goes wrong i actually quite like these effects and again just using the pen the boulder pen to find some of these edges to suggest that they were purposeful i'm going to use them to link up my signature there as well and also come around here and i'll i like putting my initials and hiding my signature somewhere else and like that we're pretty much done with our restructuring i think i'm going to come across i like this being nice and bold and we have an option to leave this blank or Often I would come in and I would do a nice bit of sort of simple hatching. I think today we've got to work out the balance of things. And today there's a lot going on in the ink around here. So I think hatching back there, unnecessary. But um, it is something that you could consider doing, depending on how your sketch is going. Up here, just going to make this line really bold, really dark. And like that, I think we're ready to do those final touches, those finishing touches. So this is where I said I might use some of these Posca pens, and I think I will. So I'm just going to make sure that they're active. I can use a little corner of the page just to do that. And there we go, that one's activated. And we can then use this Posca to regather some of these windows. So if we just find those windows again as little highlights, then hopefully they're now jumping forward a little bit more off the page. What we don't want to do is leave that as the only kind of highlight going on. So we could even just come around our building with a few more. Even do little bits of downward hatching to get highlights things like that little bits on here we can see there's highlights on top of the wall as well now i'm using a very thin posca there but there are lots of other things you can use so this is another brand of uh, of pen much bolder nib you can hopefully see and we could use something like this and just need to check it's actually active it's often difficult to tell because the marks can be very subtle but yeah this is this is active and we can apply just this kind of loose little mark of highlights in a few places don't want to overdo things but again just different ways of adding a kind of a 2d texture on top of these kind of abstract and loose images these little splodges and really go for it if we want some of them probably because i'm using a big pen probably gone this is this is more than i intended but if we just move it around we can make it feel intentional which is a lot of what my sketching's about having go playing things go wrong and then you go well I'm going to own that and uh, I'm going to make it feel like I meant it and hopefully that's what I managed to do and I wasn't sure what was going to happen but it, it's kind of worked out okay in the end for my for my taste at least a little bit of different colored poscas I've I've been enjoying playing with these as well I think they add quite a lot of fun they got this kind of 3d glowing effect they they are opaque um unlike watercolors which are not opaque so these will sit on top of your watercolors they'll be really obvious um so you've got to just go for it be a bit confident and again it's a case of like owning whatever happens with them just own that that is what's happened you've done that and go with it but along with that you can get some really lovely lovely effects um and so i think they're worth worth experimenting with if there's something you you fancy an experiment with or if you're the kind of person who likes experimenting if you're not the kind of person who likes experimenting i'm not going to force you to but it is i think a really good habit to get into um just to keep broadening your horizons keep sort of moving forward and discovering new things in art there's more than one way to improve an art one way is to perfect a single craft another way would be uh, to discover lots of crafts to discover new ways of doing things and always be sort of changing and depends what kind of person you are which of those sounds more appealing 
and you can probably guess for me which is more appealing i don't have the uh the mental strength to perfect one thing so i'm always moving around and i come back to this same looseness but it's how can i do that in a slightly different way each time and there we go and i think with that if i keep going i'm just going to make it way 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 too busy whereas at the moment what we've got is certainly rather a busy sketch very uh lively for what is a very not bland photo it's a very dramatic photo but hopefully we've made something interesting we've had a bit of fun we've experimented and we've changed things if you enjoy this kind of tutorial then uh, do check out my channel subscribe leave a comment and let me know what you think thanks very much so thank you everyone for watching my little sketching videos if you enjoy my content please do subscribe to my channel because it makes me really really happy thanks again